Hello there guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome to Survival Russia, welcome to a Sunday video here, Hangout Sunday with Survival Russia, day in the life. I think this episode here is going to be uh, pretty interesting because uh, we're going to cover a lot of topics, survival shelter, survival food, Cadillac repair in a Russian village. <laughs> we're going to do some uh, workout as well. Some of you like that. <laughs> so behind me here we have a Cadillac we have to fix, we have to change the... Cylinder head gaskets. It's a V6 engine. It's gonna be pretty funny. It's my beloved buddy, Yegor. We actually made a big uh, repair on his other car, which is a small car. But let's go in and take a look if we can. If it's not, I think it's too dark in here. I don't know. But here we are. Piet Chuvak. <laughs> Hello guys. <laughs> Are we gonna remove cylinder head? Cylinder head. That's gonna be quite the operation. Can we do it because of the sanctions or what? Is the sanctions gonna haunt us? So we cannot repair an American car? At the Stala it's more cheap. <laughs> you go <laughs> says it was before sanctions. You go said that it became cheaper to repair. His Cadillac then before the sanctions. Another little thing, thank you very much to you guys who have supported the little uh, survival, portable survival shelter project from the uh, Evenki tribes. I got part of the materials, I need a little bit uh, for the top material. Uh, so uh, we're gonna get on it as fast as we can. If you want to support the project and if you want to support the channel in general, there are several options. Subscribe star in the bottom, then there's Boosty. Boosty is uh, really good for me, except that some of you guys I cannot reply to. Uh, but that's just how that is. So I'm gonna say thank you very much for the donations from, from you guys who uh, donated to the, to the shelter project. I will post an affiliate link to RBM Outdoors. RBM Outdoors, I've been working with them for many, many years. They made me an affiliate link because they know that uh, I've been demonetized. So uh, yeah, they provided me with an affiliate link that you can shop whatever you want to shop there. There's 5% discount and uh, you also support the channel via your potential purchases down there. I know the guys from RBM Outdoors personally. They're nice guys. They're good guys. They have good customer service and they ship worldwide, of course. But I think we're just going to get on with it. <clears throat> Three kilometer run. I run sometimes. I've never been the biggest runner in the world. Not even in the, in the army, but uh, I managed, of course. So let's uh, go for a little run. Just a uh, Three kilometers, two miles. I already have the watch here, the wristband programmed. It's of course the tank X2 Ultra. We're gonna push the power button on this side. Here we already have the the workout. I hope you can see it. But we have different uh, settings, of course. No, outdoor cycle. We don't want an outdoor cycle. Regular exercise is what I use and the uh, outdoor run. Three kilometers is already programmed on. So GPS is working. When it gets green, it's ready. GPS function is actually pretty awesome. Go, it's ready. As you can see, tap to start. Hello guys. Well, I'm not the biggest runner of them all. I've never been. <laughs> so we're done. We also have a little bit of a workout to do. And maybe, maybe we'll head up to the camp as well. But uh, we'll do some workout. We we'll have some other things to do, as I said. So uh, let's check out the let's check out the data when I'm done with the workout. I see uh, if I improved or not. We filmed faster, but who knows? We finished the running. Now we have time for the little card game there. For that, I have an app. This is not a commercial or anything like that, of course. Well, we have a little app. Randomize is a card game. Let's see what it shows. It shows King of Spades. That means I have to make 10 push ups, 10 squats. Next card, next card, next card, and we do, and the uh, aces, they are, I, I denominated them as 11 push-ups, 11 squats. I never did this after a three kilometer run, so let's see how it goes. <coughs> I'll turn on the watch here again for uh, free training. It should take about 37, 40 minutes.
So we're done with the about 400 push-ups or plus 400 push-ups and squats. So uh, as I said, let's check out the data and uh, let's do something completely different and working out because we already worked out, right guys? <laughs> so guys, let's uh, head up to the campsite, to the survival shelter. Uh, I want to go up and check it out. I just uh, walk a little bit through the forest. But uh, we're gonna, of course, take the Survival so Russian vehicle part of the way. <coughs> Let's see if my uh, normally super reliable uh, SRV here <coughs> starts today. It's a little slow. Alright guys, so we made it a little bit uh, into the woods, so uh, as I said, we're going to take a look at this uh, smart band, uh, smart uh, wristwatch from a cosplay that's called uh, Tank X2 Ultra. And one of the uh, main reasons I agreed to uh, review this is that it has a GPS function. That is really, really cool and it works really, really great. I'll show you on the camera later on. But here we have different things, we can do regular exercise. And we can do uh, outdoor run, that's what I mostly do, right? But we can also do outdoor walk. So we go here, outdoor walk, you can see the GPS is uh, trying to find some uh, satellites. When this go button comes green, it's green. Three, two, one, go. So it will be recording our track and the function it has that you can backtrack from your smartphone or whatever but you can also do it simply just on this little guy here you can backtrack or you can return to where you started in a straight line that i found really really awesome so uh yeah i'm happy with it but uh, that's not so much about let's just don't talk so much about smartwatch now uh let's just go because uh, we're gonna continue through the woods here up to the campsite as I say, there's always something to see in the woods. We'll find out. Well, this is hangout day. And uh, that's the day where I can just hang out with you guys and uh, do some blah 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 and show you some stuff. I think it's going to be quite interesting today. As I said, we're going to take a look at the shelter. The shelter has been standing for a few weeks now. So that's going to be pretty interesting to see how that is holding up because we have some pretty severe winds. Then we have some Siberian balsam firs. They're really, really useful for shelter uh, bedding because if you harvest them when the frost starts or when there's uh, constant frost, then they would last for at least four months or so something. They will stay green for a very, very long time in your shelter. So they're really nice and the needles are soft and not like spruce and pine and so on. So we're here at the infamous uh, hornet's nest. See, we have some remains of it here. Bear most likely dug it out. And uh, that is most likely where I stung my hand because, because I was wearing this watch here on my left hand and uh, right underneath here when the swelling, uh, so what to say, became less or fell down a little bit um, I could see there was actually something that looked like a sting mark there. So probably, uh, or possibly, a hornet have been uh, stinging me right around the wristband, and I didn't really, or the watch band, and I didn't really notice it. All right, guys. So over there we have the pines. I want to make some camp furniture from them, and I want to bring some of this. Home. Maybe I'll cut some uh, boards or beams or something up here with the chainsaw because we have to get here again very soon. But over here we have the shelter and it's still standing. That is just mega awesome. You can see it has 
five attachment points only made with the spruce cones. One, two, three, four, and the fifth attachment point up there. I was laying here very comfortably. Here we have my table, some uh, fire starting material because it should be possible, of course, to make a very small fire in the, in the tent here even when it's raining. I cannot say that I invented this, but TP from plastic. That is a really, really fast survival shelter. And as I said, we've had some quite serious winds lately on the homestead. Shelter has been standing for, I'll check it out, but uh, two, three weeks, not less. And uh, we had winds at like 10 meters a second over the homestead. On the homestead, I don't think this would have survived just standing in an open space. No way. But in the forest, it's awesome because in the forest, haha, we don't have uh, that much wind on the forest floor actually. Doesn't even matter if it's relatively young forest here, mixed in with old forest because the pines are very old. Awesome shelter! So, what else do we have at our campsite here? Our little cooking stand, Siberian native style. That's how they make them. Long stick. Obviously, we can uh, transform this into a shelter as well. Here we have the cooking rack or drying rack, as I made videos on. For anything, skinning rack, whatever. Same principle. Forked branches. No, nothing else than forked branches. Rings made from willow. Very simple. Very effective, very strong, and very awesome. Plastic teepee, definitely worth making as a survival shelter. And a good piece of plastic, definitely worth carrying. Not always, but to places where things could get critical. See you guys. All right, guys, let's take a look at the watch. Cosbit Tank 2 Ultra, new model. It's been launched here uh, 10th of uh, October, a few days ago, actually. But I had it for a little while. And uh, I've checked it out, it works really nice, but this is just uh, the, the box it comes in. We're going to take a look at my, uh, my stats and all this good stuff in just a second. But it says box, we have a user manual in here. It's very basic, let's just say it like that. Then we just have the box and we have this, uh, we have this little extra box. And in this we have the charger, it's just a charging cable. It goes in any uh, USB-C port. And uh, here we have this magnetic thingy with clips on to the back side here. Like that. So you cannot mix it up, right? But let's get on the phone here and see what is going on. Synchronization successful. We have a sports button down here. Here we have a step counter. I just set the step goal to 11,000. We can click on it here. Steps so far 12,156, 9 kilometers distance. We can check the week here. Average daily steps 12 something. There is daily goals complete 100%. Tra -la 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 -la. And of course we have the heart rate. The sleep function here is actually pretty cool, I think. It of course monitors your sleep if you sleep with the wristband there. And uh, we can check our sleep modes and REM sleep and so on. Normal, normal, average, daily light sleep. I sleep light. But you can see REM sleep normal, awake count normal. I, I think it's pretty cool. I think, I think it's pretty neat function. Blood oxygen, 97. Anyway, sports button. Let's hit the sports button. Here we have our outdoor running, indoor, outdoor walking, this and that. And let's go on outdoor running, for example. So here's my, my runs. 3.05, 3.06, and outdoor running 2.27. This is... Uh, 
15 minutes 28 for 2.3 kilometers. That is not very good. But that was in the dark, outside, in rain, and running around the field where it's very difficult to run at night. 17.12, 17.23, which is really, really weird. Because uh, today, yeah, I felt actually I was faster than last time, but I wasn't. So uh, anyway, we can press it. See, here we have our our GPS thingy. You can see where I run, just straight line on asphalt, on pavement, down to the village from the road and back again to the car. We have some details here, average pace, stride lengths, pretty cool. So real fast, what I like about it is the good build. It seems to be really well, solidly built. And of course the GPX function, the dual band GPS, really awesome for outdoors, running, hiking, and uh, for us to walk in the woods. We can easily use it for that. And the backtrack function is of course also awesome. So again guys, there will be links in the description to this guy here and it will be shipped directly from the US if you're in the US of course. So uh, no problems there. So that is the Tank X2 Ultra from Cospet. Check it out, really awesome. I make my own dog food. So here we have some pigtails, some pig liver and some fish. We have a little bit of uh, fat from a pig, from the local village of course. And then we of course have buckwheat. I've been talking a lot about buckwheat, roasted buckwheat. That is one of the best survival foods in my opinion. And uh, you know, I've seen all these old videos with preppers and this and that, and they're prepping for their dogs, house pets and so on and so on, right? Buckwheat. It's really awesome. It has protein, of course. So does rice and so on, right? But buckwheat, among other things, has a lot of uh, amino acids, meaning that uh, you will be able to make use of the protein, actually, much better than the protein content in rice. That is one of the big advantages, one of the awesome things about buckwheat. Buckwheat should be any survivalist uh, food stable, in my opinion, because you can food, feed, you can food yourself, <laughs> and you can feed your dog, and so on. Usually in the old days, back in Denmark and so on, buckwheat was used for uh, for feeding pigs, right? So uh, you can make fat pigs with buckwheat. So let's get on with it. So I just want to give a shout out to buckwheat, and you should definitely look into it. I mean. United States produces a lot of buckwheat. I think it's the second or third largest producer in the world. But Russia is, of course, the largest producer of buckwheat in the world. Buckwheat is awesome. Homemade uh, dog food is also awesome. This is like partly frozen, it's not completely frozen, but partly. So what we're gonna do is that uh, we have a big uh, campfire pot down there. I'm gonna chop up some pigtails if I can prevent it from flying around. Normally it flies straight down in the pot when we're doing it like this. And uh, it's cheaper and it's healthier than the commercial dog food. And uh, usually dogs live a lot longer if they eat the uh, Kind of normal food. We'll take a little bit of this pig fat here. Not all of it. Oh, the boss is coming to hang out. Hello, boss. Yeah. What? Then we have some fish you can see. Very, very small fish. I have no idea what they're called in Russian. Oh, yeah, I know what they're called in Russian. Khamsa. Well, I have no idea what they're called in English. That's what I wanted to say. And then we have a chunk of liver. Liver is always best to cut when it's like partly frozen. Then it's easier to cut. We're just gonna cut some slices of this here as well. 
Then we're gonna add a bag and a half, that's 800 grams of uh, buckwheat in a, in a bag. So we're gonna add something like 1.2 kilos of uh, buckwheat to the mix. So brick of fish, it costs next to nothing. I like less than a dollar for a package of these guys here. Sometimes, just to freak the kids out, I take a spoon of this dog food that I need it <laughs> when they are watching. Because, I mean, of course it's not that tasty, but uh, I mean, you could definitely survive on this, that's for dang sure. And the uh, boss is in good shape. So, uh, that's the dog food. Water, relatively warm water. Something like that. We're gonna cook this stuff in the tent <laughs> because boiled liver uh, doesn't smell really awesome, <laughs> to be quite honest. 